Welcome to BP Online. We're a church that meets in North Central Calgary with people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, and we're excited you're joining us today. We hope that as you watch online, you're encouraged and challenged in your faith, and most of all, that you encounter Jesus. If you're checking us out for the first time, welcome. You're in the right place at the right time. Whether you're watching us at home or on the go, we hope you'll be impacted by the service today. Thanks for joining us. We will be starting in just a few moments. Hey everyone, welcome to our weekend service. Why don't we stand and worship together. Tigers fall, but fear cannot survive. 
to church this weekend. We're so glad that you made it out. I know things have changed again and masks are required in public places. But honestly, this week as I went around the city, I just saw it begin to create more and more. Every store you went into, it seemed like about 80 to 90 percent of people were wearing masks. So you knew it was coming. Uh, but tonight, tomorrow, throughout this weekend, we're just going to worship whether you have to wear a mask or not. Whether you're in the building or you're watching online, uh, we're so glad that you've tuned in. This weekend's services are going to follow the pattern. We've done this before where we worship, we read some scripture, and we pray into some specific things. So we're going to be praying for our children going back to school and our children's ministry and our youth ministry and drop-in center. And we're going to be praying for families and we're going to be praying for missions and evangelism and uh, we're going to be praying for a move of God. We're going to be praying for our government. We're going to be praying uh, for some other stuff. I can't remember all of them. But we're just going to pray and worship and read scripture. That just sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? And so there'll be times when we'll tell you, just go ahead and have a seat. And that's because that section is going to be a little bit longer than others. But uh, So you might have to be up and down a little bit. But that's kind of how this weekend is going to go. So at home, we encourage you to stand and worship along with us. And in those moments where we say to sit down, go ahead and sit down. But let's just enter in and see what God has in store for us this weekend. So Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your presence in every home that's online. And God, we just know that you want to do something in our lives this weekend. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit, very Spirit of God, to come speak spirit to spirit. Challenge us and transform us, Lord, into your likeness so that the world can truly see you through us. And God, as we pray, Holy Spirit, speak spirit to spirit. Lord, even show us how to pray tonight. As those are praying on the stage, Father, in, in our seats and at home, Lord, show us how to pray in agreement with what you are saying and what you are speaking into our lives. Father, may we truly touch heaven tonight and may heaven touch earth. And may we see changes take place in the physical as we address them in the spiritual. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.
that I got for our youth ministry for this coming year. It's in Psalm 68, verse 4 to verse 6, and it says this. Sing to God, sing in his praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. And this is the part that was burning in my heart is, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Church, if you join, join me in prayer for our youth ministry, is this. Father, we thank you that you are good. I pray that this past year, the difficulties that we've seen, that we know that this year is not going to stop. And we rely on you. We know that you are faithful. We know that you are good. We know that you are great. So, Father, I pray for all the students that are coming through our buildings from families and those who don't have any families, that you set the lonely in families. For those that don't have parents that they've grown up in our youth ministry, you are a father to the fatherless. And, Father, I pray for the families, for even parents that are either single or doing this by themselves and they don't have a partner. I pray right now that you will be their defender. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for our students in this place, for our kids in this place, and for the parents and for the generations to come. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are with us and you do not leave us alone. You are forever faithful. And we rejoice and we praise your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, why don't you join me in prayer for our youth drop-in drop in center. As you know, we're going to be launching that. It's going to be open open Tuesdays and Thursdays. And also, join me in prayer for our young adults, which is going to be open on Tuesdays and starts at 7.30. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the ability to run a ministry that just reaches out to teenagers. God, we thank you for school systems. We thank you, for, Lord, for educate, educators, for teachers, God. We just ask that you would be with them, God, that you would guide them, God. That, God, that when some of these teenagers who've never been to church come into our youth ministry, come into our drop-in center, that they wouldn't see judgment, they would see Jesus, God. 
we thank you, Lord, for all the cooks, all the, the tutors, all the workers that you're going to bring into the drop-in center. And we say, God, that you continue to bless them as they give their time, Jesus, that you would honor them, God. And Heavenly Father, as they reach out to these teenagers, God, that they would be you to these teenagers, God. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for our young adults. We want to thank you, Lord, for Pastor Ben. We just ask that you give him wisdom as he leads, God. In this, in this culture that's turning more post-Christian, God, we just ask, Father, that, that you would bring volunteers into Pastor Ben's ministry that are seasoned with salt in their words and love, God. That when people come with questions, they wouldn't just have answers to people, but they would have answers to the people's hearts, God. And right now, our youth, our young adults, our drop-in center, that we would just destroy that statistic that says young people don't know Jesus. And we would start to create a new statistic in Bennington, in Calgary, where young people are on fire for Jesus, God. So we thank you, Father. And we say, God, have your way, God. Go before us this season, God. COVID will not stop us, God. But God, we will overcome because you have already overcome in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In your amazing name, we pray. So let's take a moment to focus on marriages. We, we know right now marriage is a, is, has been a very difficult thing during COVID. And I'd like to read a scripture from uh, Colossians 3, verses 13 and 14. And this is really the scriptural way to look at this. It says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance amongst, against anyone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let's pray together. Lord, our heart's desire is to live in harmony and unity with each other. Bind your love to our hearts so that we can live in perfect unity together. Teach us, Lord to care for our family members and forgive each other's mistakes. Lord, be in each household represented here. For those watching online, for those in the building, Lord, I pray your blessing over each and every home that's represented tonight. Lord, give, give a special portion of your love for those that desperately need it right now so that they can in turn love their spouse and be a good parent. We pray this blessing over each family. Let's pray for family tonight as well. There's some special challenges. Let's read from God's word though. Galatians chapter six, verse five to seven. Love the Lord your God with all of your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. What amazing responsibility parents have to raise their children in the Lord. So let's pray tonight that God would give them the wisdom they need in Jesus' name. Lord God, we just thank you today for families. We thank you for parents today. They're trying to navigate such difficult situations and circumstances. Lord, we pray for divine wisdom. We pray for your love to fill their homes today. We pray a blessing upon them, Lord God, a generational blessing that would go from parent to child to grandchild in Jesus' name. Lord God, may your name be lifted up. Amen. I invite you to stand again as we sing the blessing.
declare his favor in this place. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, in their children, in their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, in their children. In their children, may His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for. says that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continue to be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Can you say amen? Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look on him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivered them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for those in this community that are over 50 and over and the ministry that it reaches. And we're gonna also pray for those that are just needing the healing power of Jesus. Can you just stretch your hands out towards the Lord as we just pray um, on behalf of our 50 plus ministries. So Father, in Jesus' name, I give you thanks that Lord, that thy word stands true. And that Father, our Lord, that the, the, the 50 plus ministry, those that are a part of that ministry, have seen you work in so many different situations. Father, they have seen you and they count you to be faithful. And we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that your arm of, uh, uh, you, that you will stretch out your hands and continue to strengthen them, continue to strengthen this ministry, Father. And, and Father, oh Lord, that as individuals connect with this ministry, that they will see Jesus. And that, Father, O oh Lord, that the strong tower that these individuals have been over the years, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, that you will continue to be their strong tower, that they will lean upon you. And, Father, I pray for those that are in this house and, and Father, O oh Lord, that are watching online that just need a really a release of the healing power of Jesus Christ within their lives. I, I just pray in Jesus' name. That, Lord, that, that as we, we read in the psalm, Father, Lord, that, that you have been faithful and that when we call upon you, that you answer. I pray in Jesus' name that whatever the situations that, that they may face, Father, whatever the, the, the journey that they're on physically within their body, I pray in Jesus' name that your healing power will be released. 
Father, for, for sicknesses, for cancer, for broken bones, for, 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 for kidney issues, Father, for, for lungs or heart issues, whatever it may be, I pray in Jesus' name, the healing power of Jesus will be released, Father. And I pray, Father, O oh Lord, that your peace, Father, will, will overshadow all of those that are 50 and over as they, as they walk through different changes, Father, whether it's a job change or, 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 or having grandchildren or, or, or Father, O oh Lord, or retirement. Father, I just pray the peace of God will settle upon their hearts and lives in the name of Christ. And everyone said, amen and amen.
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You are enough. You are more than enough. Amen. He's given us everything. He's already given us everything. It is finished. It was finished 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to pray for our missionaries. I'm going to read some scriptures for our missionaries. And I don't know if you guys all know, but BP supports, uh, I think it's 10 missionaries. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I got a list of the names, but I'm not going to read it now. So, uh, but we have we're going to set up a something in the foyer to show what you guys are doing. You are sowing into the kingdom, and so this is towards that effort. Psalms 115:16 says, and this is the Amplified: "The heavens are the Lord's. The heavens are the Lord's heavens." But the earth he has given to the children of men. When Jesus came back, he came back to get back what Adam had lost. And he had given the earth to the children of men. Jesus became one of us. And he got it back for us. Thank you, Jesus. So we go out. Romans 10, 14 to 15. Again, in the Amplified. But how are people to call upon him whom they have not believed, in whom they have no faith, on whom they have no reliance? And how are they to believe in him? Adhere to, trust in, and rely on him, of whom they have never heard. And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how can men be expected to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings. How welcome is the coming of those who preach the good news of his good tidings. Amen. Amen. So as we pray for our missionaries, think about they're in a foreign land. They're, they're prophets in another land. They're being accepted in another land. We also have missionaries that have come here, and we don't even realize it, from other lands to this foreign land. And they're amongst us. And we also have missionaries in our workplace as we go out from here, from this land, the kingdom of God, into the kingdom that we're taking for him. In the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for missionaries. Thank you for the ability to ask, and you will give the nations as an inheritance for us, Father. Father, you have come and you have died so that we can have that inheritance. So, God, we pray now for our missionaries that as they speak your words, your ways, your wisdom, your name, as they go in your name, for your name, and by your name, God, that those seeds will continue to be planted, watered, sprout, and that they will reap a gigantic harvest, 30, 60, 100-fold, Father. God, we pray for their safety. We pray for their children's safety, their education, their understanding that your spirit of might and knowledge comes on them and your spirit of wisdom comes on them through their whole families and what they do and that those they disciple and they bring up, God, we pray for their families and their children and their children and that they are all available. God, thank you for making them available. So God, Holy Spirit, we bring in blessing your blessing to rain down on what they are planting, on the crops that they are planting. And God, we pray for the availability of BP Church. God, continue to bless and we continue to call on you to reign through us, reign your blessings through us so that we can support these folks in finances, so that we can support these folks in prayer, so that we can for, uh, support them in agreement. 
And so would any two agree concerning anything on this earth in your name, God, you go to work for us. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you've released your angelic army to guide them, to work on their behalf. God, that signs and wonders will start to raise up, that people will be healed, the maimed will be healed, the lame will walk, that dead bodies will rise up, that minds will be delivered, that curses will be broken, that old ways and old traditions will be renewed in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of your name and your understanding and your education, in the name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen. Available. Thank you.
you, Father. And Lord, that's our heart. God, that we would be available to what it is that you call us to. Lord, that we would step in faith to the things that you ask of us. And God, we would be that one that would respond on behalf of somebody else to see your kingdom come and your kingdom move forward here on earth as it is in heaven. So Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear what you are saying to us. Give us eyes to see what needs to be done and faith to respond to what you're speaking into our lives. In Jesus' name. have a couple passages of scripture that I'm going to read and we're going to pray into this weekend. And uh, First, I want to pray for our government. Of course, we have an election coming up and uh, one here in our city, one federally. And uh, I believe it's important, not just because scripture tells us, but specifically because scripture tells us to pray for those in leadership, but that the right people are in leadership and that they have the right people around them speaking into their lives. And in Romans chapter 13, it says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authority that exists have been established by God. Sometimes we, we, we don't understand that, why certain people are in certain areas and government and different things, but scripture tells us that God's still in control because he has established them. But I believe it's our responsibility to be praying for them that they're moving in a godly direction. He says, he goes on, he says, consequently, whoever rebels against authority rebels against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Paul speaking again to Timothy, he says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that they may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. And so we want to pray into that this weekend, that our, our governing authorities will live peaceful and quiet lives and help us to live peaceful and quiet lives but in all godliness and holiness, that their lives would truly follow what God desires for our nation. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So, Father, we pray for our nation. Father, as, as a federal election has been called and Leaders from all over this country have stepped forward to say that they would like to lead in government. Father, we need the right people at this time to be put into places of authority. And Father, we pray for individuals that are godly and will live in holiness to be able to rise to the top of leadership in our country. God, we pray that you would put the right people in that will govern wisely and help our nation to live at peace, to bring unity and not division. Father, individuals that know how to be a blessing, not to themselves, but to others. So Father, I pray over this next few weeks, as this election comes closer, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to individuals that will be voting to place the people in positions of leadership in government. God, that need to be there, whether it be federally or here in our city. God, so that we can see your kingdom move forward in this world and in this nation. And that this nation would be a leading nation that would see the world come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray for our economy. Every one of us is affected by the economy. Every one of us is affected by the things that are going on around the world and, and how they affect us here and financially. 
And so we want to pray for you individually, but we want to pray for the businesses and, and, and for the things that are happening in our country. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah speaks to the people when they're in captivity. He says, also ask the peace and prosperity of the city to which you have been carried into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Jeremiah goes on to say, marry and have children and build houses and raise them in this city, even though they're in captivity, even though it's not the place that they would want to be spiritually or otherwise. Jeremiah says, pray for the prosperity of your city, because as it prospers, you will too. And we know that God blesses us to be a blessing. And as he blesses us to be a blessing, we're able to see his kingdom and his gospel move forward. So let's pray for the prosperity of our city. So Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name for the prosperity of Calgary. Father, where we work and where we're employed, Father, we, we pray for the prosperity of businesses. Those that are part of this church that have businesses, Father, I pray for wisdom as they navigate these days, Lord, of what they need to do and how they need to lead. And Father, divine insight, Lord, that would bring prosperity to them. For those that lead in companies, Father, that they would have wisdom, Lord, of how to make those companies more profitable. Holy Spirit, you can give them favor with others that, that they have contracts with. Father, you can give them wisdom to see beyond the need of today to be able to solve a problem that will move that company into the future. So God, we pray for wisdom. And Father, for your people that are in areas of leadership and service to rise to the top. God, we pray for your favor and your blessing to be upon them. God, that they would prosper. And God, that they would then be able to be a blessing to others. And Lord, we would see your kingdom move forward as we are able to see the gospel spread. We're able to send people to spread your gospel. We're able to do the ministries that we desire to do in this city to see the gospel spread and to see lives transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. And then I want us to pray for what I believe is the most important thing of all, for revival in our nation. That God would sovereignly move God would sovereignly speak into the hearts and lives of individuals, that hearts would be open to the Holy Spirit as he's speaking to them. In Chronicles, when David is, Solomon is dedicating the temple, God speaks to him and says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. We need a healing in our land. We need a healing spiritually. We need lots of healing physically, but we need a healing spiritually in our land. And I want us to pray that the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out on His church as He promises it to be and that His church would rise up as the revival agents that we're supposed to be that would bring the gospel and the truth of God and the presence of God into our workplaces, into our schools, into our homes, everywhere that we go. In Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, they quoted the passage of Scripture from Joel that prophesied about the presence of God, about the Holy Spirit empowering His people to bring revival to their land. He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on your servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Father, we need an outpouring of your Holy Spirit like never before. Father, your church needs a fresh outpouring of your spirit. Lord, so that we could rise up with a new voice 
in this country, that we could rise up with a new voice in our communities and in our schools and in our workplace. God, that there would be power and authority behind what we say. God, that we would be able to speak to things, Father, that need to be changed and they will be changed in Jesus' name. Father, we'll be able to lay hands on people and we'll see them healed in Jesus' name. Father, we'll be able to prophesy to the future and we will see it come because we're speaking your words into life. So Holy Spirit, I pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit on us, on us as a church in this city. Father, may this place be known as a place that brings the presence of God everywhere that we go. Lord, that your people who are called by your name have humbled themselves. Lord, that they've said they need you in their lives. And God, they've seen you respond from heaven because we've turned from sin and we begin to walk in a new level of righteousness, a new level of holiness. Father, that we're obedient to your voice and we're sensitive to your leading and the power of your Holy Spirit just naturally flows through us everywhere that we go. So Holy Spirit, revive us again. Revive your church. And Father, may we see transformation this year like we've never seen before in our own lives, but also in our communities. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing one more time before we close this weekend. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Oh, you fill me. Yes, you will. Holy Spirit, come. Fire away. The fire away. Come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire away, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. I know you will fill me, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we tell Him now. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we hold. Yeah.
surrender to you. Father, each and every one of us here who are watching online, Father, we recommit. We lay down our own lives, Lord, and we surrender to your will. Lord, if there's anyone watching or here that maybe has never done that, they've never laid down their own will and invited you into their life, Father, I just pray right now that they would understand your love and understand your grace and understand your desire to be part of their life, to lead them, to guide them, to be closer than anyone else in their life. Father, they'd simply just right now invite you into their life. Just simply say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Come fill my life with your Spirit and empower me to live the life you've created me for. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's nice to know that the Lord walks with us at all times. No matter what we're going through, He's there. He's right there. He's as close as the old song. He's as close as the mention of His name. He's right there with us. And I want us to just be as we close this weekend, I want us to pray for uh, Dale Backstrom. Dale and his wife Judy have been members of this church for a long time. and uh, Judy's been in a nursing home for the last three or four years now. And uh, Judy passed away Wednesday night uh, with Dale and his children around him, around her. And uh, we want to pray for Dale. The funeral's going to be next Friday here at the church. Uh, this Friday coming at 10 a.m. If you know J Dale and Judy, uh, you're certainly welcome to come. But let's pray for Dale and pray for his family right now as we as we close this weekend. To the, the Holy Spirit would just guide them. And I know, Dale, you'll be watching, and uh, we love you, and we're praying for you. So, Father, I just pray right now for Dale and his, his family. God, that your presence would be right there with them. God, that your spirit will just speak to him and encourage and build him up. And Father, for his son and daughter, Lord, right now, that your presence would just be all around them, that they would just sense you right there. And God, that they would just know that you're walking with them through this time. So Holy Spirit, just give them a big hug. Lord, and let them know that you're there right now. Father, we just thank you that you are always with us, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And when we walk through these hard times in life, that you're as close as the mention of your name, the moment that we turn to you and speak to you, you're always there to respond. So, Father, we thank you that we know that as we move into this week, that you're going to be walking with us and every challenge that we face, that we can invite you into it, and you will respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our ministry team is going to be here at the front. If we can pray with you about anything, we'd love to do that. God bless you. Have a great long weekend. Uh, we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 7 for prayer or next weekend. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information about our ministry, visit bpchurch.ca. Have a great week and live the ultimate life.